All right, hello and welcome to the Startup Show. It is a show where we talk about your professional life, your career life, and, you know, your work-life balance. And I am Gloriti, and I have with me an amazing person, a great woman of God, someone I respect so much. And also in the business world, she is a force to be reckoned with. And this time we are moving towards the entrepreneurship aspect, and so... We have an amazing person here with us, and she will introduce herself. You're welcome, Ma. Thank you so much for inviting me here. It's a privilege. I am Franca Ulukuju. People call me PFO. Fine, but my name is Francisca Ulukuju, or Franca for short. Thank you. Huh. You can hear the fire, you know. You know. So, Mom, just tell us briefly about your fashion brand and, you know, an introduction into what it's all about. All right. So, um, Frankie's Couture actually came to be in the year 2000, yeah. oh, wow. way back in 2000. I was not originally trained as a fashion person, but I just had the interest right from when I was a child. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. I just love putting things together, putting colors together, uh -huh. just arranging things and all of that. But I just went to learn this part-time. Mm -hmm. That was in we were still in Lagos at that time before okay. we went to the mission field. Okay. So after work, I would just go to this side, uh, roadside kind of person to learn. And I did that for a period of like two years. Oh, wow. I never knew I was going to take it up as a trade oh, or as okay. a career or whatever. Um. So fast forward to the time we got to Ghana. Ah, okay. You know, we actually went as missionaries. We didn't take any certificate. Mm -hmm. We didn't plan to go and do any business. We just went to do the work of church planting, mm -hmm. just to minister to souls and harvest them for Christ. That was why we went. But along the line, as we were walking, you know, um, life happened. Like people would say, like mm -hmm. we had a lot of people staying with us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in my house, I, I can see like maybe 10, 13 people, 15 people all in the house with us. Wow. Not our own biological children. Amazing. You know, people that we preached to and oh. some of them homeless some of them have okay. been thrown out of their houses and all of that they are looking for a place to stay just just come to my house and then sometimes we record 15 like that in not for one day hmm. for days months to wow. years <sighs> that's a lot and you know it was not funny fending for them because mm. at that time we were not on salary mm. there used to be something called stipend like mm. just a little allowance for my husband. I was also trained in missionary, but then I wasn't getting any stipend, but we were there. Ah, and then we needed to take care of all of these so many people. So we were praying, God, after preaching, it is normal. Like people will be hungry and they will need to eat food. So one of the times we went on um, like a retreat, we were praying. And God, I remember vividly, it's been some years now, but I remember, like, I'm seeing Toby now. <laughs> I mean, very vividly, how God asked us this question, what is in your hands? Hmm. Wow. What is in your hands? What is in your hands? Yeah. But we are here. We didn't even bring any certificate to look for any job. We came to do the work of God. And then we started praying, and then we got clarity that hmm. it was basically about the skill we had acquired before getting to the mission field. Mm. But then I learned just by the side, I didn't plan to trade with it, mm. but God was pointing my attention to it. Mm. My husband to do, did graphics in school, mm. but then we didn't have anything, not even a pencil to draw or anything. So what are we going to do? That was how it all started. Mm. Wow. That was how it all started. Wow, wow. The little beginnings. And, and the Bible already says we shouldn't despise our little beginnings. So if you are out there, a fashion designer, huh, this show is for you. The entrepreneurship tips, everything, just be jotting them down. Mommy has a lot of fire. And we're asking her questions. And, and I've seen a lot of her work. It's just amazing. Super amazing. Okay, so um, Mommy, the... You know, the fashion world and it's full is filled up of trends, it's filled with a lot of, you know, a new a new innovations. ideas and innovations. Yes, ma'am. So how do you manage keeping up to date with all of these trends? You know, some of them in fact <laughs> it looks like it's a new thing in vogue every day. Especially regarding the, your, your Christian faith and all of that. How do you uh, manage dealing with these trends and making it personalizing this. Okay, yeah. Um, I remember, like, the first encounter or experience I had with fashion was um, 
1994. Okay. And um, you know, life or success is a journey. You keep getting better. You keep because if I was holding on to only what uh, just a few things I knew mm. as of um, 1994, I'm sure I would not be relevant in this fashion business today. Mm. Mm. So in life, you get you keep getting better. You keep learning. Mm. Success is a journey. You keep going. You keep getting better. I've learned so many things. I've had to go for trainings upon trainings mm. to be where I am now. Now coping with it as a Christian. Um, like we are not supposed to follow the world. I'm not talking to everybody. Generally, I'm directing this to people that are Christians that are like believe that they have a particular thing to do in this thing, and it's God that sends them. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking to everybody mm-hmm. before somebody will quote ah, me yes, and so. said, eh, <laughs> "I'm also a Christian and all of that." The people I'm talking to are people that maybe kind of called and that are in this fashion business by God. Mm. We know that the essence of clothing. Primarily, the first and the number one reason for dressing up, for wearing whatever, is to cover our nakedness. And I mm-hmm. remember in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, it was because um, Adam and Eve sinned against God. They went to look for leaves and they used it to cover their nakedness. Mm. But when God came around, he saw that that was not going to last. Mm. You know, leaves signify something that is not going to be very, very, um, that something that is not going to last. Something that is very, very, um, yeah, how do I put it now? Quickly. It's not sustainable. That would, yeah, something that is not sustainable, something that is, that is very trivial, mm. something that was not going to last. So God decided, God, I will say God is the first fashion designer. Because I saw in my Bible that God fashioned garments of animal skin and gave it to Adam and his wife. So he did clothing construction for them. And he didn't just use any any material. He used animal skin. If you want to go into the dimension of studying what is in what is involved in animal skin, Hmm. how quality it is, Mm -hmm. how durable it is, how expensive is it. I mean, leather. If you have a leather watch and in a plastic watch, you mm. know which one will last longer. Mm. You talk about quality. God gave them quality garments that could last for a very long time. And mm. the number one reason was because they were naked and God wanted to give them a better um, kind of clothing mm. that could cover their nakedness. So in all that we do as Christians, for me, and as many as will embrace this, will do in this fashion business, the first priority is to cover your nakedness. Every mm. other thing is secondary. Mm. But if you put the secondary before the primary, then it's a misplaced priority and you're going to get it all wrong. You know, you're going to, it's like you're abusing it. Mm. And someone says the purpose of a thing, if it's not known, abuse is inevitable. Mm. So if you do not know the reason why God created that fashion or dresses for people, you are going to abuse it. Mm. So, that's wow. It. Amazing. So, you've picked one there. If you're into fashion or you are a fashion designer, Clothing is meant to cover the nakedness. That is like the number one number, reason. At least, if anything, if you see trends keep coming and going, hold on to that. Let that be like your anchor. If you have nothing else to know whether you should go for this trend or you shouldn't go for it, if you remember the purpose of that cloth or of that design or of that of fashion generally, if you remember the purpose of it, especially aligned with your Christian values, remember clothing is to cover nakedness so mom you mentioned something and this is a personal question okay. i just wanted to know how what does clothing construct is it clothing construction is it a fashion terminology or i mean what what does it mean yeah clothing construction is actually a, a fashion terminology like construction basically means you cutting this Cutting this, mm. joining things together, oh. constructing like uh, architects, they do, they construct, wow. engineers construct. Mm. So in in fashion business, we say clothing construction. So you cut. That was exactly what God did. He just got some animals and ripped off their skins mm. and then cut them. I'm sure he didn't just carry mm. the thing and put on but them. So, uh-huh. He cut sleeves, cut this mm. and joined. I don't know where God got the machine <laughs> from, but he shall have cut. We shall have saw it there. He fashioned. He must have killed the animals before ripping off the mm. the, the skins. Okay. He yeah. did all of that mm. and then joined everything together and handed it over to Adam to cover his skin. Naked, naked. Amazing because yeah. I've learned something today. Fashion people, me too, I have, I know what clothing construction is. At least I can say that when they are discussing, I can mention clothing construction. Okay, so now on to the business, this um, brand. 
the Frankie's Couture American brand. So I believe in this, our Nigeria, our peculiar Nigeria, we know, you know, the challenges and all of that. So how has it been building a fashion brand in Nigeria? What are some of these challenges and how were you able to overcome them? Hmm. Yeah, because I said it in the beginning that it was God that brought the inspiration to us. So mm -hmm. when God starts the thing, we know as Christians that he will not abandon the project halfway. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you find someone whose project is abandoned, that means maybe the person is not listening to God instruction, God's instructions well enough. Because God will not start a thing and just abandon it. Mm -hmm. He will be speaking to you. You may not know everything at the beginning. That was mm -hmm. it for me. I didn't know where it was going. He just said, what is in your hands? Mm. And that was the question. Now we picked it up, trusting him, just handing that particular business into his hand, allowing him to lead you day by day. He leads you on. And before you know it, you just look back and you see that you've covered so much, mm. you know, in mm. this journey. Mm. So I will say the, the, the whole thing in Nigeria is not really funny, mm. you know, starting up a business because a lot of, you are confronted with a lot of challenges by the day you have to go and source for fabric yourself. Mm. You have to go for, look for your customers by yourself. You have mm. to find a way to sew it and get it done. You know, production generally, then you you still you are still the same person that will look for probably customers or maybe you are the yeah. kind of big person that you can export and all of that. So it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. And it takes a lot of self-determination. Mm. It takes a lot of self-motivation. It takes a lot of doggedness to be able mm. to succeed as a business person right now in Nigeria because a lot of things are confronting us on a daily basis mm. and you just have to survive. You just have to be fine. Mm. If you don't hold on to God. Because for me, God leads me by the day. Mm. It's either he's bringing this job or he's leading me to talk to this person. Mm. And he's just making a way. It's mm. him that is God that has been doing it. So mm. that's what I would say. Okay. Surviving so, in this kind of economy. Nigeria. Maybe he did. So um, talking about, can you just give us like a specific challenge and how you're able to overcome it, especially a recurrent challenge, a challenge that, you know, is somehow generalized. It's, it's, you can't but experience it as a fashion designer. As a fashion designer, come, please take the okay, question Okay, like again. a personal, like uh, a, an encounter or a challenge that is usually reoccurring, not something that happened in one time, that you know that this person is to go into or to build a fashion brand in Nigeria today they would encounter some of these things okay. and how they can overcome Okay, it. let me look at it from this direction. Like, um, we have different types. The aspect of fashion, Yes, we, they are different. We yes. have different aspects of fashion. We have the training. Mm. And then if after you have been trained, like mm. in pattern, like maybe you've attended the fashion school, Okay. There are some people that use freehand cutting. There's what mm. we call freehand free cutting. cutting. Okay. But the future really is in the pattern drafting. So mm. if you have attended a fashion school, you must have gone through that. Then uh, after, you may want to major in just training. Mm. You know, there are a lot of fashion people. Mm. There are a lot of people that know how to cut. They know how to sew, but they don't know how to train. Mm. There are some people that the training aspect is what is where their strength, strength is. is okay. So those people may not really be involved. They know how to sew basically. They can cut, they can sew. But their strength is in passing the knowledge onto and others. To others. So those people, it's good you know your area mm. of strength. So you can major in training. Mm. Then some people do bespoke tailoring. Mm. What I mean by bespoke tailoring is like ready to fit you. Oh. For you, a bespoke uh, is a custom made order, order. Oh, just for you yeah. so you do for individuals your mm. size is different from my size yes, yes. different from this other person's size mm. and they are good yeah. they okay. know what they are doing in that area and they are good there are some people that don't want they don't have the knack they don't have the energy to be pursuing customers you know sometimes mm. the problem with bespoke is tailoring is this sometimes you sew something it fits very well on a particular maybe mannequin or maybe on the Instagram and then you want to sew it you may sew it and it may not fit it's on you, you mm. because we have different shapes mm. our shapes differ especially ladies we have different like about six different shapes yeah. so it may not really fit and the person you have problem ah this place is not fitting mm. hey Jekinico, and all of that and all of that so if you don't have the energy like I've trained people some of my students I, I, I have looked at them and I've studied them to say that hmm, these people they cannot really cope with you know customers mm -hmm. I told one particular student don't don't open a bespoke <laughs> a bespoke 
outfit mm-hmm. when you finish from Frankie's Zoo. Just go and do ready to wear JJ. Because if you do bespoke, this, this, this uh, customer will come and say, ah, this place is not a, a, a the thing is tight here. I just zip. Some people don't have the this, patience. They don't have the patience. They will fight and and if you fight with customer A, fight with customer B, then you are going to you are not going to be in business for a long time because all of them will run away. Mm-hmm. So for those people, I advise them just start a business of ready to wear yeah. business where you use sizes. We have what is called standard measurement. So you use your standard measurement. You may have maybe you just want to cater for size 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, mm. 18, 20, something like that. So that when you have it in your store, people walk into your store and say, oh, I'm a size 20, I'm a size 12. If you don't have it on your rack, just say, madam, oh, thank you. God bless you for coming. I don't have this. No problem. No, mm. no wahala. You are not stressing. You are not fighting because you have used the the standard measurement. So if the person cannot find her size on the rack, just say, oh, hey, bye-bye, and it will be next time. So no fighting. Okay. But for bespoke, it's not the same. You know? So it really depends on what you want to do. Mm. Okay. You need, it All really right. depends on what you want to do. Then you major in that. Some people can combine training, bespoke, and that. ready to be. But mm. some people can just, some. there's still the other part of embellishment. Mm. Some people just like, they don't have strength to be cutting and don't have strength to be cutting and sewing and all of that. They just major in. Exactly. They give their jobs to other people to sew and they just design it and they sell. It's still their brand. Mm. Amazing. So, so you've seen different aspects. You've spoken a whole lot on all of that. So let's just talk about the sales when it comes to marketing, sales and you know distribution. How do you deal with that? Yeah, per- for me personally. Yes, personally. Or, okay. For me personally, um, I work for schools. Okay. Some of the schools I work for are very big clients because okay. they order in large quantities. Mm. And in business, if you know business, you know that um, whatever you are selling in one 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 is not really mm, may not really give you. Um, but when you do in in bulk, bulk mm. buying and all of that gives. I mean, brings more money. So I do. I work for schools. I use. I do uniforms. I do mm. choir robes. I do graduation gowns. And then I'm into ready to wear. All this um, Ankara, oh. uh, all this um, um, what's it called? African fabrics, fabrics yeah. just to just to just to bring out our culture. our culture. Yeah. So I do ready to wear in sizes. So marketing, we use the social media. Mm. Then we have one or two um, bulk buyers okay. that buy in wholesales and they go back to the corners to sell mm. for other people. Other people. So that's oh, how wow. I do my. That's another strategy you can adopt. So um, you talked about customers the other time. So I just wanted to touch briefly on dealing with customers. How do you deal with customers? How do you maintain relationship with them? And at the same time, still maintain your values and your standards? Yeah. Um, customers, over the years, I've had most of my customers are now my friends. Mm. Because I have already have that disposition. The Bible says that if you want to be friend, if you want how did he put it now? Let me just paraphrase. If you want to be, if you want people to be your friends, then you must be friendly too. Mm. If you are in business and you are this kind of cocky person, you are not mm. friendly, you okay. squeeze your face every time, you're not smiling, mm. you won't get clients. Mm. So you have to be friendly. When people walk in, we have a few people that could walk into my store and when they come already, I make, I've, I have that disposition. I want mm. you to be my friend. Mm, so I'll, I'll make you comfortable. Mm. We talk about your family. We talk about what you're doing. Mm. If you're a student, I'm, I, I, I get interested in what, you know, matters to you. Mm. So already you are comfortable with me. Mm. And then we pick up our business from there. As we done. <laughs> so how about difficult customers? How oh, yeah. From time to time, we meet such people. For such people, we just pray for grace <laughs> to be able to cope with them. Mm. Uh, you know, because uh, especially if they are newcomers, if there are new custom, uh, they, if there are new customers maybe coming to you for the first time, you mm. just have to receive grace to mm. know how to cope with them because some people are conventional, they are conventional in their training, in their kind of dress, dressing. Mm-hmm. Some people are ah, like some dresses. Now this is my dress that is English wear like this shirt. If you have not stoned it and oh. embellished it, they are not okay. Even the, if the cloth is 2,000, they want you to put a lot, a lot of, stones, of stones, a lot of beads and all of that just to bring it up. Mm-hmm. And, but there are some people that really don't fancy such. Simple. So in mm-hmm. one of our, in our curriculum, there's, um, there's a particular topic that talks about knowing your customers. Mm-hmm. So when you have a new customer, you want to know who this person is, mm-hmm. the kind of things the person likes. Some people, if you saw a cloth that is that wants 500,000, if there's no touch of red, 
Oh, it's not okay. Amazing. But no matter whatever you sew for her, that I have such customers that mm. you must put a particular color. Mm. Some people red, they must be red. Even if it's brown, they must be red. They must be red. There must be a touch of red somewhere. <laughs> so if you know that kind of person, no quarrels, mm. just do that. Put the red, and the person is fine. You are also fine. Yeah. Pays me my money, and we are good friends. No need for explaining. No, just no. do. And some people are there. They don't like joining materials together. Mm. Those people are the very, very conventional people. They can't stand you joining. Shade, nice. Even shades of blue, for instance, oh, it can't really? take it. Just do one shade <laughs> and it'll be fine. No stone, no anything. Don't put ribbon, don't mm. put anything. Just use only the material. They are mm. good. So you, that topic is very, very, very key. Broad, yeah. You need to yeah. understand your customers. If yeah. you understand them, they won't be quarrels. Ah, amazing. I'm learning a lot. I'm not in the fashion business per se, but I'm learning a lot. So quickly, mommy, let's talk about um, how do you... What tips can you give for a woman, a Christian woman who wants to be modest and fashionable at the same time? What what um, tips can you give to her? Um, if you want to be modest and, and be fashionable, fashion. you must have a good fashion sense. Because hmm. sometimes I dress up and people will like, ah, and it may just be one, not very cheap, more, but not the very expensive fabric. Hmm. Like this shirt now, I don't want to talk about how much I bought a yard, hmm. but I just bought Two yards, and he got me this fine shirt. Yeah, it's, fine. it's a work of art. I can decide to sell it for hundred thousand. Mm. I can decide to sell it for twenty thousand. It depends on how, what value I place on it. Mm. Some people may say, "Ha, ah, Shebi, you bought material for only two thousand. Why are you selling it fifty thousand? It's not none of your business because it's a work of art, mm. and it it's the price you call it that it is." Mm. Do you get it? Yes, so get it. For you, if you are modest and you are not, you don't want to break, you really don't have to break the bank mm. before you look good. You can buy the basic things and if you get a good um, tailor or a seamstress that will work on it, it will mm. still come out fine. Mm. It, still, it will still come. I've made dresses, like there was a time we had a location, you, you were the bride. Oh. I remember mommy Gloria called <laughs> me casted. and she said, okay. <laughs> I need to make a wedding gown with, we call it minimalistic budget. Mm. Mm. I remember I just had to use the basic satin. Mm. I can't remember exactly, but it was a very mm. small budget. But we made a wedding gown and it was beautiful. beautiful. So yes. it doesn't really have to be too exorbitant to be fine. Mm. Mm. You can still use very quality things, not too exorbitant and still look fine. So that means to be fashionable and modest, you don't have to break the bank. You have oh, to have a fashion oh. sense. That's like very key. So you know what to piece and piece and piece together and then cover up, you know? Yeah, we've mentioned that already. So um, to wrap it off, let's just talk to aspiring fashion designers out there. What advice do you have for them? What, what admonitions do you have for them? Yeah, for you out there that is still like upcoming and you hoping that one day you become a fashion designer, um, I will just encourage you that keep at what you're doing. Get mm -hmm. trained. That's the first thing. Because if you're not trained, it's like you won't know your right from wrong. You may have the passion. You may have the, you know, the zeal to mm -hmm. want to do certain things. But by the time you get trained, you see that a lot of virtues, a lot of things will be unfolding right in your mm -hmm. presence. And um you be good. Hmm, amazing. I, 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 I stumbled across something that happened just recently. Somebody killed someone and it happens every day in Nigeria hmm. here. The girls are looking for money so they fall victims Victim. here and there. Somebody say, come and uh, come around, collect 20,000, collect this money, I will sponsor your education. You really don't have to go through that route. Hmm. When you can learn simple, basic thing with your hand and if you learn it, Isha award, they call it Isha award mm -hmm. in Yoruba. Yes. Nobody can take that from you. Mm -hmm. I do. I can't remember how many cut, how many clothes I've cut in this my lifetime, like this short time I've lived and that I'm here, I've been here. I cannot remember. Mm -hmm. And each time I take my scissors to cut, mm -hmm. I must earn money. Mm -hmm. So if I can cut something and join it together and make money for myself and the many people around me mm -hmm. and be comfortable, why do I have to go and beg? Mm -hmm. Uh, sorry to uh, 
to take a little time. I remember back in the mission field, I trained many, many missionaries because mm. for me personally, I don't believe you should be going around begging, begging, begging. Mm. No, I don't believe in that, in that because mm. God trained me by himself mm. to be strong and to be enterprising. So when I see a fellow sister or a fellow missionary crying, my husband has not given me money. Yeah, mm. Can you come? Mission field has sent us. They have not... I just say, sister, don't worry, just come. This is it. Let me teach you. I I thought I I know how to make a lot of things. I make hats, I make facilitators, mm. I make beads, beaded yeah. bags, and everything. Okay. So if you also have learned a trade, mm. you will be able to take care of yourself, your immediate family, support as a woman, support your husband very well, mm. and even take care of many other children that mm. are less privileged. So if you can be this this kind of blessing to people, I don't know why you will want to stay back and just be sleepy and be waking up. So that is that is my piece. Walk with your hands. Do something for yourself and be a blessing to the gen. Don't stop looking for somebody that will give you something. Mm. Rather be that blessing that God wants you to be and you'll be good. Wow. That one hit Thank everybody. You. It hits all of us. We need to walk. Sit up and walk. And I love the fact that she said to take care of yourself. Even if it's just that. Learn a skill. To just handle basic needs. You know? It works. Okay, so um, mommy, got, just to I wrap have, it. Okay, okay, I have one scripture. I have a scripture. That's that has been one of the scriptures I've been holding on to. That's in Proverbs chapter twelve, verse eleven. Yeah, I remember it now. It says, "He that tills his land will be satisfied with bread." Mm. Everybody has got a piece of land to till. Mm. You are tilling your land by being here. Mm. Do you get it? Everybody has a piece of land to till. It may not be the necessarily the physical plot of land, but there's a gift of God. There's something. There's a creative ability God has deposited. Each person's own varies. But he that tills his land will be satisfied with bread. Mm. He that gives himself to frivolities will, will suffer. Mm. At the end of this day in the Bible. Mm. So if you till that small thing that God has given you, remember I went out not to be a fashion, not to take this up as a fashion career. I went to the foreign land to be a missionary and to serve. But along the line, God brought this. And I took it up and I've been tilling. And then tilling, you know, it's not easy to till. It's, easy. it's a difficult thing. But the Bible says that if you till that land, you will be satisfied. Uh, so okay. that's my word for everyone out there. Till that little thing, that small thing that God has placed in your hand, till it. And you'll be satisfied with bread. Amazing. Thank you Thank so you. much. Ma. So can you just tell us about Frankie's Couture, mm. the handles, and where we can oh, follow okay. you? So Frankie's Couture is a fashion outlet or outfit that is located right um, around Ashi Bodija. Uh, Lara Bod, precisely, beside Midas Pharmacy and beside Real Event Center. In that place, we cater for people that want to learn yeah, I train people that want to learn fashion business. I train them. Then we also sew for customers. I have the outfit that we make ready to wear dresses. So you can just walk into a store. You're looking, maybe you want to go for an engagement. You want to go for a program. You, you're looking for something new, something affordable to wear. Just walk in, you find your size there. And if you are looking for a place where you can be trained or anyone that has just finished school and is looking for, maybe waiting for admission, you can actually come there, enroll, and in a few months, you'll be, you'll, be, you'll be trained properly. Amazing. Yeah. All right, guys. Andal. Thank you. Andal. Andal. Okay. Okay. Yes. Frankie's Couture, underscore, uh, Frankie's, um, Frankie's underscore Couture on okay. IG. Instagram. And then Facebook, Frankie's Couture. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Mommy. We are so, so grateful for having you here. Thank you for the knowledge you've dispelled or, you know, we've learned a lot. I have learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And even if I'm not in that business, it applies to almost all other businesses too. All right, guys. Thank you so much for, you know, staying with us till this point. I believe you've learned one or two things. And I also believe that you have been blessed. Yes. Okay. So that's it for today. This is where we draw the curtain. And do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Design Culture with the K. And follow and like our videos. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, guys. Bye. Bye.